Hi, this is David Abayma Trill. Welcome to video 8B, which is the second of five devoted to the topic of risk management and investment management in the 2012 Part 2 FRM. That means that we continue with two chapters that reappear from prior years in the FRM. So both of these are well seasoned from Jorian's textbook, Value at Risk 3rd Edition. Not the handbook, but the textbook 3rd Edition. The portfolio risk analytical methods, this contains a few of the metrics like uh, marginal VAR, component VAR, incremental VAR, and it's brief, but it is dense. And then VAR and risk, bud and risk budgeting and investment management chapter 17. One learning spreadsheet associated for each of those chapters, 8B1, is a worksheet that really summarizes each of those concepts of portfolio VAR and Jorian. And 8B2 illustrates the surplus at risk, probably the key metric in Jorian's chapter 17. So if we look at chapter 7, individual VAR is now a formal name given to the VAR that we've generally been working with, which is to say it's the VAR of an individual position in isolation. So Notice that it's just a good way also to get comfortable with the notation here in Jorian. That's VAR of a position denoted sub I as opposed to the portfolio, which would be P. So here we have the VAR of a position. It's going to be this notation here should start to become quite familiar. And first of all, um, we're doing a relative VAR, right? There's no drift or expected return here. It's just the volatility or sigma of the position multiplied by the deviate, or I like to say scaled by the deviate. And so, you know, that alpha, generally when we're working in the assumption, mean variance framework assumption, that deviate's going to be either 1.645 at 95% confidence or 2.33 at 99% confidence. In terms of the exam, there's the only two you're probably going to have to deal with. So the deviate multiplies by the volatility. And that's going to give us a scale of volatility for the position in return terms. If we multiply it by the value of the position, absolute value of the position, we can get the individual VAR. So this would give us a dollar VAR term, give us the, uh, the VAR in dollars. Notice we can also take this WI, which is the dollar of the position, and break it out as the weight of the position in percentage terms. So maybe it's 10% or 5% of the portfolio multiplied by the total portfolio value. Maybe that's 1 million and this is 10%. So the product of this is 100,000. And maybe that's, so that's another, that's a, a really a breakdown of the capital W sub I. So this relative VAR, that we've been working with is now formally the individual VAR for just the position. The incremental VAR is the change in VAR owing to a new position. And so it's really summarized right here. It's the VAR of the position that, I'm sorry, it's the VAR of the portfolio including the position. So that's denoted portfolio plus the position minus the VAR of the portfolio without the position. So see how it's just a difference? Here's the VAR of the portfolio. We remove the position entirely. We check the VAR again, and we see the difference. That's the incremental VAR. <clears throat> so the incremental VAR is a before and after comparison of the VAR, and it requires a full revaluation of the portfolio VAR with the new trade. The diversified portfolio VAR is also something we've been working with, and now we just get a formal name for it. For the two-asset portfolio, the variance is given by this formula. This is one we absolutely need to be familiar with. We would have been from part one. Portfolio variance is equal to the weight of the first position squared times the variance of that position.